Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Wade with Black Tie Barn. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. If you are new to this channel, we talk about candle making, tips, tricks, how-tos, tutorials. We do candle reviews, um, other product and candle making material and supply reviews as well. So if any of that interests you and you'd like to be part of this community to help each other out, uh, please subscribe below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy the video at the end as well. I'd really appreciate it. And, and of course, as always, I appreciate all of you for being here. So. I said we're gonna do something a little bit different today. Well, I've been experimenting with trying to get involved a little bit more with TikTok just for some promotional and behind the scenes type footage and just to have a little bit more fun. So I've kind of started a brand new TikTok account. I don't actually have anything posted yet. So, I mean, it's, it's literally in the works. Uh, but while I was doing that, I just started seeing some of these other kind of viral candle making hacks on TikTok and I thought, all right, Let's have some fun. And as a professional candle maker, I thought it'd be fun to react to some of these hacks. Now, I haven't watched any of these yet, uh, but I just saw the titles and the thumbnails or whatever you call them on TikTok. And I thought, all right, before I start watching any of these, uh, why don't I record it and we'll have a little bit of fun with it. Because I don't know what we're going to see, I may have to edit anything out that ends up being inappropriate, of course. And if there's any music on them, I might have to edit that out for copyright reasons. But I will do that all after I'm, I'm done recording. So... Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I don't know if a lot of the, the hacks that we're gonna see are coming from other professional candle makers um, or if they're just, you know, just hobbyists or, you know, just people having fun and, and messing around with some candle making on the side. So we will see as we go. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this. Let's go ahead and get started. If you ever find yourself in an emergency situation and you don't have access to candles or even flashlights, all you need is a lighter and a crayon. You can actually light a crayon on fire and it will burn for about 30 minutes. You just need to melt the top layer of the crayon off just like this until you get down to where the wrapper is of the crayon and then that will ignite and burn for about 30 minutes giving you some light. Again, this is only for emergency situations and never ever leave this unattended. Okay, so yeah. Okay, so yeah, this this will obviously work, um, and I like that they repeated several times that this is meant just to be for emergency lighting. This is not how you make a candle, and you really don't want to use crayons for candle making anyways uh, for several different reasons. Yes, it's a wax, but some of them are toxic, and even the ones that aren't will end up like clogging wicks and things like that. So you really don't want to use candle, I'm sorry, crayons for real candle making, but they're just say, suggesting that as a way to have like an emergency, like emergency candle or an emergency lantern if you lose power or you just need a light somewhere. The funny thing for me about this hack is I don't know that I'd ever be in a bind where I don't have a lighter or a match or a candle or a tea light or something, but I've got a handy box of crayons. So <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I've got kids and I don't even know where I'd find the crayons. In the but anyways, yes, it would work. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so we're seeing a candle here with wet spots and it says how to fix wet spots. Take the heat gun and heat the outside of the jar until the wet spots disappear. Now, I mean, wet spots are a problem everyone deals with. They, there are no more wet spots. Okay, so let's stop it right there. I mean, that's a short video. I um, mean, this is really nothing new for anyone that's uh, been, you know, making candles for any, any amount of time at this point. This is one of the biggest or first things that new candle makers notice and it really bothers them. And that is where the wax pulls away from the side of the jar a little bit and it it, it, caught, it it looks like a wet spot, and that's why it's called that, but really it's just the separation of the wax from the from the jar. Now when this happens to the entire uh, jar, then it doesn't look all that bad, but when it happens in random spots, that's where it's a little distasteful looking, although it doesn't impact the candle whatsoever. So what they're suggesting in this video is that uh, using a heat gun to heat up the outside of the jar, you would remelt that wax and that it would re-stick to the outside of the jar, um, and then you're good to go. The problem with that solution is, yes, it would temporarily fix it, but just as when you made the candle, it was temporarily fine as well. And then once that wax completely cools again, you give it some time, it will most likely end up pulling away from the glass yet again. So you temporarily fixed it, made it look a little bit better temporarily, but most of you notice, most of us notice that when you pour a candle for the first few days, uh, for the first several hours to days, it does look totally fine. It's just eventually... Uh, the wax will pull away a little bit. Now it happen, It doesn't happen with all waxes as much. It, it just depends on the type of wax you're using and, and how firm that wax is and whether it shrinks and contracts and how much and all of that. But uh, the, the problem with little fixes like this is they're usually temporary. What really causes that to happen is changes in temperature. And so you may make it look perfect and it's sitting on your shelf perfectly, but as soon as it goes to another room or another house or you ship it, 
the temperature changes are going to cause the wax to expand and shrink and expand and shrink. So I don't know that it's it's worth all the time and effort when it usually ends up returning, but it is totally up to you. And yes, it does kind of technically help, um, at least in the short run, but it just usually doesn't last. Next. All right, it says messed up candle top. So they're talking about that cratered, uneven, kind of bumpy top, maybe in some sinkholes. They're saying grab a heat gun, use the lowest setting, stay far enough away, so you know, light the wick on fire, and then... Uh, and then yeah, you um, you melt the top and then it makes good looking tops. Now this is similar to the last one. It does help uh, and this effect will actually last much longer. Um, this one will fix the top of your candle, the way it looks anyway. But it does look a little bit better when you have nice level smooth tops. It will last in this case longer, uh, but as soon as you light that candle and then it resettles and cools down again, some of those pro most of those problems will come back, those surface problems like the bumps and crater tops and holes and ugly, you know, rough tops. Uh, that's just the nature of working with most of your natural waxes like soy wax and they will come back. Uh, those issues do come back. So yes, you can make it look great with a heat gun on a low setting in order to sh to sell it and it looks better on display. Of course, that definitely works. But just know that um, the first time it is burned, uh, most of those problems are going to come back after it after it cools down again. So just just be aware of that. Next up, lemons. Idea, putting toothpicks in a cut lemon and then a tea light. Toothpicks are holding the tea light and she puts a lemon on top. Um, hmm, okay. I don't know if this is a candle hack um, as much as it is just someone having fun. Um, I, I'm assuming this is an un, unscented tea light and they're just getting a little bit of a lemon flavor or lemon fragrance as you're, as you're burning it. I mean, there's nothing here that would say this doesn't really work. I, I guess I would just wonder why? What? I, to me, it's a waste of a lemon. <laughs> I mean, I like lemons, so I don't know that I would waste an entire lemon just to have one tea light burning when you could just buy a lemon fragranced candle, but that's just my opinion. Next. Candle making hacks. Tape, paper towel looks like. Um, tape the paper towel directly to your pouring pitcher. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, and then uh, it's, as, you're, as you're pouring candle wax into jars, you obviously get some of those wax to runs down the side of the, the, the pouring pitcher and it leaves a little bit of a mess and you're constantly wiping the pouring pitcher. And so what they're using here is just taping the paper towel and saving you a little bit of work and you can keep reusing it. Uh, it just does make things a lot easier. This is actually a really, really good tip. I don't really do this. I just don't ever think about it. But for those of you that are starting out and looking for ways to improve your process a little bit, this is a good idea. I mean, this does truly work. Uh, and so it's a great tip. The only thing I would say is it that wax, that paper towel does get saturated pretty quickly because the wax keeps going to the same spot right in the middle. And so I don't know that it lasts a super long amount of time. I, I, when I have done this in the past, I did have to change it every once in a while because once it gets too saturated, um, it just, it ends up running through, um, or it just doesn't hold up. So, uh, if you're going to do this, do this some good, good quality paper towels, you know, your bounty paper towels or something. But anyways, this is a great tip. It really does work. Next. Right guys, get a couple blue candles right and Ooh. a couple more, melt them down. Chuck a bit of blue wax blue crayons candles. in with them, right? Then put a bit of eye shadow in it to get it stuck Oh no. Glamorous. No. Stir it up, right, like a potion. Cast a spell on your ex-boyfriend. <laughs> and look, it's got all speckles in it. It's actually a pretty nice looking candle. <laughs> okay, this guy's funny. Uh, so he makes this video, this video more interesting. I like his voice, his accent's hilarious. So, um, he is right. It does look like a really nice looking pillar candle there. I love the, the, the effect, the lines through it and a little bit of the sparkle. So he's not wrong about that, but don't put mascara in your, in your candle wax. I mean, I think that probably goes without saying, um, the blue candles are fine. Although you could just use blue candle dye. Um, but the mascara is a no, no, don't do that. Um, if you want that effect, just use some kind of candle safe mica powders that will give you the same kind of glittery effect. Uh, by, but actually using a candle safe product. I don't know that the mascara is uh, not safe or anything, but it's pr it, it would just risk clogging your wick. I, it's just not an app, it's not meant for candle making. And if it's not meant to be used in candles, I think it's better to avoid it. So there are other alternatives that can give you that same result. But anyways, it is a great looking candle. He's not wrong about that. Now this video continues. So um, I'm going to let this guy keep going. He's fun. Right guys, put a couple old flowers in a glass with some gel wax and prod it with a stick. Put that in here and then <laughs> fill it up with wax, right? I'm not gonna lie, 
that would look fancy on the mantelpiece in the living room. Okay. Uh, this guy's funny. I don't know how much this guy knows about candles or if he's just having fun reacting to um, to other hacks, but it uh, looks like he's reacting to five-minute crafts hacks. Anyways, so yeah, there's nothing um, technically wrong with this either. Um, this is all doable. The bottom portion of the candle is filled with gel wax, and gel wax is great for that see-through look. Uh, as well as using embeds, things that are floating inside of the candle. So uh, nothing wrong with that. Although I don't know, I'm assuming those might be real flowers. I'm not a fan of putting real um, flowers and things like that in it. I would rather use embeds, things that are made out of wax or uh, fake flowers, things like that. But that's that's a different different topic. So that is technically woodwork, yes. And then once that is dried, um, they just poured regular regular wax on top and and wicked it. So really nice looking. I should say that this, uh, I, I realized just looking at this as I was talking that the wick is only in the top part, not the bottom. So if that's the case, there's really nothing wrong with the, using the flowers in it. I don't know how well they'll hold up over time. They may start looking kind of nasty, but uh, that's that's beside the fact. The fact that it isn't wicked all the way through that um, really does make this okay. So if you're looking for something aesthetically appealing and interesting looking, you could certainly do this. There's so many things you can do with gel wax. So uh, yeah, not not too bad. Let's let the guy keep going. Look, guys, you put little Look, pieces of paper with messages inside the candle, right? And then fill it up with more candle juice. And then when <laughs> it melts, look, it's got a lovely message in it. Candle juice. Okay, that's how I'm going to start talking in my, my future educational videos. Not wax, it's candle juice. I'm going to do one of them for my missus. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a cute idea, right? Uh, as you burn it, you see a little message. Um... You know, I'd have to think of some other ways to do that. Uh, the problem I have with this one is it looks like they're just little pieces of paper with text typed on it. And uh, yeah, that's dangerous. I mean, it's paper. You're putting paper in a f with a flame. Uh, they've made a fire starter is what they've done. <laughs> so I don't know that I would do this. But if, if you can use some kind of uh, like a wax paper or something that will just melt eventually, uh, but not catch fire. Great idea. Great idea. Cute little idea. So... Uh, I more than anything, I just love this guy's reactions these whole times. He's pretty funny. All right, moving on. Okay, so I'm gonna pause it real quick. Um, for those of you, especially beginners that are new to candle making, tunneling is where the wick ends up being too small or not burnt long enough, and the uh, the wax ends up hanging up too much on the sides. A little bit is really normal and actually kind of a good idea early on in candles because you'd rather it be a slightly underwicked than overwicked, and usually the wax will catch up. But sometimes it doesn't. If it is tunneling too bad, the wax will not catch up. And so um, her solution here, it, it, I'm assuming, is going to be how to, how to help that. If it's already tunneling, what can you do? So she's grabbed some foil, kitchen foil here. Let's see what else we're doing. I know what she's going to do, but yeah. Yeah. All right, so that will 100% work. Um, what they've basically done is just uh, help the candle trap in some of the heat. Um, it's the same thing as if you were to burn this in some kind of uh, hurricane container, hurricane glass or something like that, or um, even candle toppers. If, you, if you've ever used a candle topper, uh, not only do they keep the flame, they, they regulate airflow a little bit so the wick burns better, but it also keeps some of the heat inside a little bit better. Um, and that's all they're doing here. They they are covering it with aluminum foil, keeping the heat trapped in a little bit more on the upper side walls, and it helps that melt down. It will definitely work. Couple things to consider though. One is if it is tunneling too bad and there is too much wax built up on the side, as that wax melts, it's going to add to the to the melt pool, and the wick is can often end up being too small. Um, I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly, but the wick could be burning because it's the proper height for the amount of wax that it's consuming at the moment. But as soon as all that wax that's on the side starts filling in, it could drown out the wick. So it's almost it's almost like opening a dam and letting water flow in. Uh, it, it could end up flooding out the wick. So uh, if it's tunneling too bad, just keep that in mind. And if, if that does happen to you, you might just have to remove some of the wax um, after the fact so that the candle will end up... Um, being able to to stay lit. But yeah, this totally works. Nothing wrong with this and it can help save a candle 
Um, so if you're, you may post this as a tip or suggestion to your customers on your website, or if you ever have an issue with the candle that you're purchased or using, this tip will definitely work. Next up, tiny flames, fix tiny flames. All right, uh, liquid melt pool, put in some cotton swabs, soak up some of the wax, probably do that a couple times. Yeah, and then, uh, then you don't have tiny flames anymore. So this is kind of the opposite problem of the last one. Uh, this is where you're getting a melt pool, but the, the, the wicks are so tiny. This is really common with triple wick jars. In fact, um, I, I, many that I've purchased and used over the years have done this as well. Personally, I don't mind the tiny flames. As long as you're getting a melt pool and, and it's dispersing the fragrance in the air, I'd rather have tiny flames. I like the safety of that a little bit better than crazy wild hot flames. But occasionally... Um, if, if they do look like they're going to kind of die out or drown out on you and you're really super concerned about it, yeah, this will definitely work. Soak up some of the wax, dispose the cotton swab, don't put it, don't pour it down the sink or anything like that. And then relight, you should be good to go. All right, next up. All right, so, uh, they are poking a hole. We're going to do a wickless candle here. Yeah. They're going to insert a wick and then if it doesn't work, you can pull the wick out and redo it. Now they're using a wood wick in this video. Okay, so yeah, they've used a wood wick in this video, um, and here is what I would tell you about wickless testing. Technically speaking, everything they showed in this video works, and there are a lot of people, maybe even a lot of you that do wickless testing. But I do have to offer some caution here, and I have a video on the channel, I'll try to remember to link it here, um, about my thoughts on wickless testing and how well it works and whether I use it or not. Spoiler, I really don't. There's a couple reasons. Um, if you insert a hole and then just stick a wick in, it'll burn fine the first couple times, but as the candle gets lower, the wick, there's nothing holding the wick in place. So it just leans and, and eventually, eventually kind of sinks or falls over and, and you're not getting an accurate representation of how well that wick is burning. There's been so many times because the wick started to lean or fall in further that I thought it wasn't wicked large enough. So I would pull the wick out and kept going larger and larger and larger. And then I found out when I made the actual candles that they were way over wicked because those wicks were actually staying in place. So be very cautious if you're doing wickless testing. It does work significantly better with wood wicks. And in fact, if you're making wood wick candles, I wouldn't even do this. I would make a regular wood wick candle, use the clips, put them in the bottom of the jar, and then when you insert the wood wick in the clip, if it doesn't work out, it's easy to pull the wood wick out of the clip and insert another one in the same spot into the clip. So with wood wicks, it's very easy to do it. And I do do wickless testing with wood wicks. Well, not really wickless. Like I said, I, I start with a wick and then I just pull it out and reinsert a new one if I need to. But with cotton wicks, I really don't. I just make test candles and I just am aware that it's part of the testing process. It's, it's part of doing business. It's spending some of the time and money to, to test your candles. That's my personal opinion. Guys, I just discovered something that no one has ever done, okay? Ooh, this should be good. Look at this. This is a candle. This is Yankee Candle. Uh, but yeah, Santa's Cookie. Great scent. Recommend it. 10 out of 10. This is good scent. Okay, so as you see, the flame's lit. I've used this candle a little bit, it's okay? Nice but who cares? Watch this. So I'm going to go ahead. First thing I'm going to do, like most people do, is blow the flame out, okay? Okay, so you'll see a little bit of smoke. We're going to let that smoke going Maybe go into the going air. On. Okay. So now what you're going to do is go ahead and take a lighter. I like this one here. Um, it's not childproof. Anyone can light it, which that could be problematic, yeah, yeah. but who cares? Okay. So let's go ahead and relight this candle. What's the trick here? Okay, so uh, yeah, you just watched me blow out a candle and light it again. Share this with a friend to waste their time. Seriously? Some people. Some people. I, I'm not fond of that. <laughs> And that is the risk you take when you don't watch these videos first. I had no idea that was gonna be a waste of time. Oh well, moving on. Easy candle hack. All right, so they uh, we wanna get that wax out of this container. So they're pouring in water and microwaving it. Yeah, and this is pretty common. Uh, that will eventually cause the wax to rise to the top. And after you let it cool, um, oh, that's, yeah, that works sometimes too. If the jar's hot enough, you can peel off the labels. But once it does fully cool, you can uh, just pull out the wax. So it is a really, really easy way to, to clean the candle. So that definitely works. She's going even further. Okay, she's turning into little wax melts, it looks like. This is also true. It is easier to pull off the wick tabs once you've done this as well. Yeah, and then she's just reusing the container as like a wax melt holder. So cute, resourceful, resourceful. 
Yeah, she's definitely not wasting anything. That's a great idea. Great idea for your, you know, recommend it to your customers again or do it, do it at home. So another good idea. One thing I would say is there's another way of doing this. If you don't want to deal with a microwave and all of that, you can just boil some water and just fill the candles with boiling water. Um, that works just as, just as good. And in fact, that's typically what I do because I don't like to keep constantly running the microwave all the time. So I just melt a huge, or I just boil a huge thing of water and then I just fill a bunch of candles, let them cool, pull out the wax, move on. So a great little tip. Uh, that definitely works. Awesome tip. Next. I have no idea what's going on here. Lighting another candle. What? Okay. <laughs> Zero chance of that working. I. What do they think? Like, there's so many hacks with Coke and most of them are just completely fake. Now this video continues. I pause it real quick. So... I don't know what we're going to see in the rest of this video. Um, uh, sometimes these are reaction videos to other things and I'm reacting to the reaction. So someone might already be reacting to this and, in, 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 you know, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but there's no way that works. But let's go ahead and finish the video and then we'll see. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what would happen. Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> That, that's more like it. Uh, that is what would happen. Um, I I don't know why anyone would believe that uh, pouring Coke or a liquid over your candle is actually going to keep the flame. But the bigger question for me on that one is, why would you even want to? What I don't understand the purpose or the benefit of that. But anyways, I'm glad that they just proved it so I didn't have to. Guys, that's all I have for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed a little laid back something different on the channel. Um, I, like I said, I'm trying to experiment a little bit with the TikTok channel. And while I was doing that, setting up an account, I saw a bunch of these little candle hack videos and I thought this would be fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, if you did, let me know in the comments, give this video a like. I do plan on doing some other YouTube and Instagram uh, reactions as well, because I have seen a lot, a lot of those pop up in feeds before. Some of them are great advice, which I, I want to share. And then others are not good advice, which I want to share as well as a, as a precaution. So if you guys like this video, let me know in the comments, give this video a like, and I will see you all next time.